Hello again to everyone that is uh, tuning in and uh, hello to Lucy. Hi Lucy, how are you? Hi Mariella, very well. Very excited to be um, celebrating the Modern Music Festival this weekend. Obviously very different circumstances, uh, but great to be able to do it virtually at least. Absolutely. So uh, we already had a little event earlier uh, today. We had a, a nice distillery uh, tour video and then we did a little interview with the distillery manager, uh, David Livingston. Uh, while this is the um, tasting event instead, so I'm joined by my lovely colleague, sales manager, Lucy, as we will actually go through uh, the range with you. Uh, I'll cover three whiskies and she will cover another three. So what I will cover is the uh, barrel reserve, uh, the 10 year old and the quarter cask. So it's, we call them the classics, you know, they're um, um, bourbon cask, mostly, you know, lead. Uh, while Lucy, which whiskey will you cover? So uh, for my part of the tasting, we're gonna go through some of the more aged expressions of Aaron and the more sherry focused ones. So we have the 18, the 21, and also one of the latest additions, the sherry cask bodega. Amazing. So uh, you don't have to have the exact same drums at home. I know we have already a lot of uh, uh, people that are uh, missing out on the festival. You know, that they're, they're missing the festival a lot. We all are. By this time, we were definitely having an old drink uh, and possibly a dance as well. So, you know, we're still celebrating. So we, you do need to celebrate with us. Go in your cupboards, try, you know, grab whatever iron whiskey you have and join us as well. If you have the same whiskeys, even better so that we can try them all uh, together. So what we'll do is that I'll uh, start uh, the tasting and I'll cover the first half an hour. So in case you want to join later and to see uh, Lucy and the Sherry Cask led uh, whiskey later, you can just join around 6.30 and just follow her. Or you can just follow through the whole tasting and uh, listening to our chat and our whiskey tasting notes. So uh, I'm just going to say ciao for now, Lucy, and uh, I'll see you later if that's okay. Yeah, later. Cool. Nice. Thank you. See you soon. Cool. So thank you very much for uh, joining everyone. I hope you're all well and uh, I am missing the festival as much as you are, especially now that it's a little bit sunnier in Glasgow. Last year was my first festival and I absolutely loved it. It was so sunny and it was absolutely beautiful. It was so hot. And, uh, but we had such a great time and whiskey was flowing and it was, uh, it was brilliant. I did a very nice tasting. It was a great experience. So what we'll do today, what I'll do is I'll cover the, um, the barrel reserve, the 10 year old and the quarter cask. I do have to say, I do love a bourbon cask uh, matured whiskey, uh, especially an iron one. I, I, the quarter cask is actually my favorite. So I'm very glad that uh, this selection was selected and you know, chosen for me. So before actually I talk about the whiskey, I would like to talk a little bit about the company especially because uh, this is an important year for us. If you followed the previous event, I already had a little chat with you all about, you know, anniversary. Uh, this is our 25th anniversary. The company-wise is actually very important. It's a very big milestone for a very young uh, distillery. And when I joined Arrowar and Distillers, I had a few ideas of, you know, uh, what, it, what the company would be like or why would I love to, uh, why would I love, you know, to join the company. And uh, one of the things that we're most proud of, and we keep repeating and shout, you know, from the rooftop, is that how uh, happy and uh, just proud we are of being independent. I know for some of you, you know, that maybe are single malt drinkers and you know your Scottish distilleries inside out, you, you know of a lot of other independent distilleries. But I think it's very important uh, to just focus on this side of the company because um, it's like a family, even without being a family. Like uh, even David said it before, it's the team, uh, which uh, just it's a team and a group of very passionate people that are in touch, you know, very easily. Communication is very easy amongst us because, first of all, the team is not that big. And second, we all just love whiskey so much, you know, that we can create things all together, like this virtual tasting at the end of the day. And the fact that we are independent just helps all of us. I can call, you know, my manager, I can call them a distillery manager. No one will ever turn, you know, away uh, because we all believe in people as an independent company. We can do really, we can be ourselves, we can be honest, we can be transparent and we can, you know, create 
good quality whiskey because that's exactly what we want to do as an independent company. And that leads me to our second point, which is actually quality. Uh, one of the reasons why I wanted to join out of our industry is that I knew the love and the passion and the effort that these people were putting into just creating a good quality whiskey. You can already see it for our range. Uh, we never chill filter. Uh, we never color and we always try to bottle at 46% or a higher ABV because we really want to give you the best, you know, quality whiskey that we can possibly, uh, that we can possibly do. So uh, it's very important because uh, we try to keep the whiskey as natural as possible and try to bring home to you uh, a, a good, you know, single malt at the end of the day. And that quality is not just about how we treat our whiskey, but it's about every single stage of our or have a process like distillery process, so distillation, production, and also maturation. Uh, we have an amazing wood policy now. We use very good quality cask. You know, we take our time for, for doing like fermentation up in La Cranza. It goes from 50 hours to 110 hours. Uh, we do a very slow distillation, one of the slowest in the industry. And this is all done for quality purposes. We really just want to give you the best that we can. Uh, we're also a very experimental company. I'm pretty sure some of you, some of the names that I'm seeing now know this a lot, especially if you've been collecting our whiskeys. It's been a little bit of a nightmare for you. I'm sorry, but it's also very exciting on our side because uh, we do like to experiment uh, with, with cask varieties, with peat levels. Uh, we are a very young distillery, but we're very experimental uh, at heart. And um, we're also a bit of pioneers, if you think about it. Well, to speak more in details about our founder and um, our founder and what he did, what he achieved in '93, um, um, '93, and then '95 when we actually founded the distillery, uh, because we did open in a very difficult time. Uh, we actually decided, you know, to open a distillery in a time where whiskey was not booming that much. And uh, despite all the difficulties that we encountered since 1995 to this day, uh, we still made it through. And today we can celebrate with all of you our 25th anniversary, which is a great big uh, milestone. Iron is also fascinating. Iron malt, iron whiskey is fascinating because we are not really trying to compete uh, with anyone and we actually never really wanted to. I know that it's very easy, especially when you go to a bar or when you go to a shop to just categorize whiskey. And uh, Aaron being an island is always next to, you know, your Highland Park or maybe your, your Talisker or your Island Malt, your Orkney Malt. And instead, it's just nice to see that Aaron just wants to be Aaron. We have our own unique style that we followed through from 1995 until this day. To that extent, actually, now we also built a second distillery down on our uh, down on the southern part of the island called Lag, uh, the Lag Distillery, which mostly focus, only focuses on 100% peated production, so that our Locranza distillery up north can follow with the classic iron malt style, which is actually, we call it a space side um, from uh, an island, because as I said before, for, thanks to our distillation, we try to achieve a whiskey which is very easy, it's very smooth, it's very lingering, very fruity and floral, but still holds a character thanks to our fermentation. Thanks to our distillation, it's still a whiskey, you know, that, that gives, you know, that is a very nice texture. So I hope that while we enjoy these whiskeys today, I hope that you're enjoying some whiskeys at home with me as well. You'll agree with me, um, you'll agree with me in, you know, why our whiskey this is so good as well. So without further ado, I'm just gonna put myself a dram and I'll go and read a little bit of the comments to see who's joining me today for a dram as well. Oh, I hear maybe there are some, uh, um, some connectivity problems. I'm sorry about that. I'm actually uh, in the Glasgow city center right now. So unfortunately, I think everyone is on their phones at the moment. Sorry about that. If, uh, if there are more bigger problems, by all means, just fire away and uh, write me in the comments as I'm keeping an eye on them. Um, so they just annoy if I'm like freezing or if you can hear me very well. I hope you can all understand the accent as well. <laughs> cool. Nice. Hi, Fiona. Nice to see you. Uh, I also know this, Fiona, that you put, you are putting, you're watching this on a big TV. So that put me under a lot of pressure. <laughs> I think you can see me in a very big TV. That's very big. <laughs> but I hope you're enjoying the festival at home with us as well. Hi, Dieter. Nice to see you. I also saw 
uh, John Lamond, thank you very much for joining us. And a lot of the White Stack people, thank you guys for all the support uh, that you're giving us this weekend. We all miss you and we're looking forward to seeing you on Iron soon. So the Bio Reserve, which is actually a brand new product which was launched um, when we rebranded our whiskies, you can see that now they all look very different uh, from the previous packaging. Uh, it's a beautiful new design. It's actually focused mostly on our water. We are one of the purest water um, uh, in Scotland. So we decided to use that as our concept. So we wanted a very transparent, very clear, almost minimalistic, if you want, uh, style of packaging. So there are a lot of water references here on the Ripsol bottle, uh, on the bottom of the bottle as well. It feels very much like water. And we wanted to give you all the information possible about these products right on the label so that you don't have to look for those information anywhere else. So I'm very glad that this uh, bottle came out as well, you know, as soon as we launched the packaging, because this was actually a revelation for me. I used to, you know, I always tend to be um, a little bit of a single malt snob. You, you tend to get snobbish, the more snobbier as, uh, as time goes and you drink whiskey. And when I looked at this for the first time, I thought, oh, an iron, you know, non statement, barrel reserve, it's bottled at 43%, so it's gonna be a light and easy whiskey. But actually I was extremely surprised because I forgot again about the iron texture. So yes, look at this as your breakfast whiskey if you want, you know, if you're into your single malt drinking, this is definitely a light and easy. It's a nice warm hug, you know, if you're coming back from home, you had a stressful day, you just want something nice and easy to cuddle you, this is like the best whiskey to go for. But still remember that it's a good iron single malt. We do have, you know, a little bit of a warmer climate. So even a younger whiskey at seven, eight years of age, like this one still delivers quite a lot. This specific bottle is actually all first fill bourbon. So you have a lot of sweetness and all the bourbon, you know, fruitiness and lightly spiciness coming through too. Uh, it's also, uh, it, it just literally iron at its core. That's how I like to call it. If you just take iron spirit and put it into a bourbon cask for seven, eight years, this is what you get. So it's literally iron without too much going on, without too much, uh, too many different cask varieties. It's just very straightforward. It shows you exactly what the spirit can deliver in such a short time as well. I always like to say, I don't really like to tell people what to taste. I normally don't tell people what to taste during tastings, uh, but as I can see your faces and your reactions and your movements right now, I don't really know what you're thinking back home. So I'm just gonna express and share what I like to think, what's, what's the sort of flavor profile that I get from, from this whiskey. Um, so first of all, on the nose, you can tell there is, on the color, you can tell there is already a bourbon cask. It's very light, a nice pale, like hay color, which is lovely. But on the nose as well, you can just tell straight away. It's very light, very lingering. It's almost like summery. There's like summer flowers. It's like on a nice, on a nice, you know, clear day, you're eating maybe like, you know, some peaches or some orchard fruit, some apples that are very, very fresh. That's a sort of juicy apple, juicy fruitiness that you get on the nose. There's hardly any spices or any bitterness. You can tell there is a bourbon cask straight away. I'm gonna go on and enjoy a little sip, slunch to all the people that are uh, joining us, wherever you are in the world. breakfast whiskey straight away it's so fruity iron it's iron is a beautiful sweetness um sweetness and a beautiful fruitiness you also it there's always a bit of coconut lingering around there's orchard fruits all the way there's a bit of zestiness but this time around it's more like a a fresh like lemon peel uh squeeze it's like a lemon meringue if there was such a thing it's always a cake I always imagine iron as a cake. I, I just love cooking and I, to be honest, butter reserve is what I put in every single thing I do. I make a banana bread, I just drop a little bit of butter reserve in it. I make a cake, I make a tiramisu, I make whatever I, I'm cooking. The other day I made a haggis uh, whiskey sauce with this. I just use it for everything because it's such a versatile spirit. It's just so easy and so light and fresh, but still on the palate it delivers so much. I'd love to have this constantly, you know, at you know, reach of a hand just to use with everything, everything I'm doing at the moment. But as I said before, what I love the most about this, and despite the fact that it's a bit filtered, despite the fact that it's bottled at 43%, it still delivers. It's not a boring dram. It's actually a very good, you know, fresh, fruity dram, which I hope that you're enjoying at home too. 
So someone is actually asking, no info on the bottle of uh, Barrel Reserve about non-chill fill or not natural color. We always do. Uh, so actually this time around you can see it says American oak because it's fully matured in, uh, um, in bourbon barrels, really. And then it says natural color. So because actually this whiskey has been a little bit filtered, so it, it, has, gone, it has gone through a chill filtration, which is a little bit unusual actually for us. Uh, but we decided that it was actually best for um, the products that we were trying to create. We were trying to create a more accessible, lighter product. So we thought that a bit of a filtration would actually help. If you're into your cocktails as well, this is a very good base because it's a fruity, easy dram that doesn't overpower a lot, you know, the other spirits or ingredients that you're using. So we just wanted to create a, a lighter style of whiskey. That's why it was a little bit filtered. Nice. Someone said, Dieter just said, it's actually a very good uh, aperitif. That's actually perfect. I would love to have this with maybe, you know, a lemon slice topped up with soda on a nice, warm, sunny Scottish day. We got a, we, we had a lot previously, so I hope that we still have some more during the summer, but uh, it's definitely more an aperitif. It's a good starter uh, of the day. Cool. So uh, moving on, I would like to talk to you actually a little bit about uh, our founder and uh, how the distillery and um, the company uh, was born and why actually Aaron was chosen as a place. So the, our founder, his name is Harold Curry. Unfortunately, he passed away uh, a few years back, but uh, he was a man with a dream, as I like to say. He served during Second World War and then he worked at Chivas um, until he retired as a managing director. So he always had this dream. He always wanted to have, you know, his own distillery and someone likely recommended him Aaron. So as I said before, we need to put things into perspective a bit. Uh, this guy decided to start looking at Aaron in 1993. Uh, and then our first distillation was actually Monday, the, this is going to be today, not Monday, those years ago, but it was on the 29th of June. Uh, so please join us on Monday as well and raise a toast with us as it's 25 years of uh, stills working away in La And um, So you have to put things into perspective. This guy decided to build a distillery when the time was very hard and it was very tough. Um, just to give you an example of, I don't know if you are into collecting or you like, uh, you know, your close distilleries whiskey. Um, it was 1993, if I'm correct, I might get this wrong. In 1993, I think that actually uh, uh, Pity Bake Distillery closed down, very famous close distillery. In 1994, Little Milk Distillery closed down. And then this guy decided to build a distillery in 95. This is the reason why we call him a pioneer, because he actually opened the doors to a lot of other distilleries that opened up afterwards, after us. As he, I, we like to think that he saw the potential of a whiskey distillery in those days. We, he, he possibly saw that there was going to be a boom again. Maybe not to the levels that you know we have today, but it definitely uh, is definitely foreseen uh, that whiskey was going to get popular again. The reason there are actually three reasons why he chose Aaron. As I said before, it was likely likely recommended by a friend, uh, but there were three main reasons why he decided to stop there and actually build a distillery up in Locranza. First thing is actually the water itself. As I said before, we have one of the purest water in Scotland. Locranza, up on the northern side of the, um, of the island, is one of the purest water because it actually comes naturally from the mountains. Our water uh, comes from a, a loch, from a lake, that is three kilometers up the road behind the mountains where our distillery is based. This loch is called Loch Nadavi, which means Lake of the Deer. And the water passes through seven waterfalls as it reaches the town um, down the valley. Every, at every waterfall, there is a little bit of oxygen level rises and the debris kind of purify the water as well. So when they reach the town, it's a very, very pure water. Uh, first thing he did was actually testing it. And as soon as he got his test back, he found out that the pH was extremely neutral. So we actually don't have to do any treatment at all. We can easily just take it from the river that runs very much behind our distillery and just use it but not only to make whiskey but also you know for temperature control uh for cleaning and everything else you can imagine that having a distillery means that you need a lot of water because you need to do a lot of things with water so that was the reason why he said that's perfect that's exactly where i want to build my distillery and then he started building in 94. Uh, the second distillery is actually a microclimate so if you look at where iron is uh geographically 
uh, is very different from the rest of the islands. I've only been actually to Isla, and I thought that, you know, all of the, I was very naive. I thought that all of the Scottish islands were kind of the same. Uh, Isla is a beautiful distillery. It's a beautiful place, especially if you're into your smoky whiskies, uh, because they're so close and there are so many distilleries, you know, just next to each other. Amazing coastline. It's very dramatic. You know, it's right in the middle of the ocean, not a lot of vegetation. And when I went to Ireland, I actually realized that it's completely different. Uh, it is Scotland in miniature, as we say over here. It's got a very uh, mountainous northern side, which will be the highlands. And then it's, just, it's got this rolling uh, deep valleys and these beautiful beaches on the southern side. This also, you need to consider also the fact that it's placed uh, in a very protective shelter. So you have the peninsula and Kintyre on the left that kind of works as a shelter, and then the Ayrshire coast on the right. The Gulf Stream that comes from the southern part of the UK actually stays in the little mini Gulf, making Ireland a little bit warmer. So we like to say that we have our own microclimate. On a winter day, you can actually see snow you know on goldfell which is our highest peak in the northern part of the island and then you have maybe tropical flowers in brother castle or just palm trees on the southern part of the island and that's absolutely normal for uh, for iron so right now actually thanks to our like distillery we built three more warehouses down south so we're trying to bring all of our casks back because we want a little bit of the faster maturation that you get with a bit of a warmer climate it means that sometimes we do lose alcohol and sometimes we can lose liquid as well. But it also means that we achieve amazing taste even at a younger age. So if you look at our knowledge statement whiskey bottles in the core range, you'll see that you know they're always around seven, eight years old, but they don't really taste like a seven, eight years old. They actually taste, you know, they just taste good. They're just very good drums. <laughs> And last thing is illegal distillation. Uh, a lot of people, especially whiskey drinkers, might know about Campbelltown, like the queen of uh, illegal distillation in the old days. Uh, but Aaron was just, you know, just as bad, I don't know if I can say that, as Campbelltown. Uh, we actually found records that say that there were at least 50 illegal stills running on the southern part of the island. So people were actively smuggling uh, whiskey, which at the time was called Aaron Water. Uh, the last legal distillery to close down actually closed down in 1786. So when we um, uh, when we brought whiskey back uh, over the island, we were very proud because we were actually bringing back whiskey legally after so much, you know, heritage and history uh, of illegal distilling on the island. So that was a very good achievement, you know, and it, it was again very good to give whiskey back to the island and the place as well. I'll stop talking. Unfortunately, I'm Italian. I could talk forever, but I realized, you know, that we need to move on. So I'll just put myself the second drum, which is actually the 10 year old. This is it. We call it the benchmark of the whiskey range because it's uh, literally shows you iron at its finest. We like to think and it just uh, everything we wanted for iron to show in a bottle in a dram. So uh, this bottle is 46%. Um, it is non-filtered, it is non-colored. It is a mixture of bourbon and sherry cask. Um, and it's uh, then been finished in first fill Oloroso sherry cask for a minimum of nine months before being bottled again. So what you have here, especially for the fans of the previous 10 year old before the rebrand, I like to think and I like to say that this is a little step up in a way that uh, it's a bit bigger, it's a bit richer, it's a little bit more, not in your face, but it definitely delivers that little extra, the little more that you would expect, you know, from a whiskey. And especially such a, a young age that is only 10 years old, it's very rich. Here is what I get, um, that texture that I was telling you about. This is oily, it's a little bit waxy, stays with you at 46%, it drinks extremely smoothly. I wouldn't add water personally, but feel free to... Uh, feel free to uh, add a little drop. But this is as smooth as it comes, as rich as it comes, and just delivers everything. Another little thing that I have to say, actually, this time around, uh, it, it's also a mixture of uh, 10, 11, and 12 years old, just because we were running a little bit of stock uh, on 10 year old stock. So if you find it a little bit more mature as well, you're not wrong. It's just that the liquid in this bottle is a tiny little bit older. I'm just gonna enjoy this as, as my boss say, you and Mitchell, I talk too much. So <laughs> I'm just gonna shut up for a few seconds, it's lunch.
absolutely love me. So it's almost as if all of those fresh fruity notes that you had with the Barrel Reserve kind of turned into a baked apple tart, or like uh, with a little bit of cinnamon sprinkled on top. It's very malty, it's very caramelly. It's baked fruits all over, but not too cooked, like just right, you know, right cooking temperature. It's, uh, uh, it's very sweet, but at the same time, there is this lingering, you know, um, spiciness, almost like a little nutmeg or hazelnuts. It's very autumnal. If the butter reserve was an aperitif, like a summer dram, this is definitely more for like, you know, the lightly colder days with uh, maybe you want to enjoy this, you know, with a little bit of chocolate next to the fireplace. It's just, it just delivers so much for a 10 year old, which is beautiful and it stays with you. It's uh, it's a little bit darker, it's a little bit more rounded, but it's not a boring dram. It's actually, you know, a it's like a, I like to call it a session dram, you know, when you have like a session beer. This is a session dram. This is a dram that you will share with your friends and have, you know, two, three, four drams of it. It's not something that you just only have once. It is warmer. It is more, you know, like I want to say a little bit more welcoming, but it's something that you can enjoy over and over again and, you know, don't get bored of. Cool. Last thing I want to talk to you about before we move to my favorite um, whiskey uh, of the core range is actually, I just want to, I don't want to go into too many geeky details, but I think it's good that we talk about uh, a little bit about what we do differently at Locranza production wise. Um, we don't do our own small things. We are a small compact distillery. We were in 95 and we still are. We only increase capacity by adding a few pieces of equipment, like a couple more mash tons and a, a new pair of stills. Uh, but uh, we do things, we like to think that we do things the, the, the old school way as much as possible. So we do invest in only Scottish molds uh, instead of getting molds from elsewhere. We already talked about the water, which is very pure that we just get from uh, from the back of the distillery. We do try and run a fermentation, which is longer on the weekends. So on Monday to Friday, we do a 52 hour fermentation with a distiller's yeast uh, called Kerry M, which actually works a little bit faster. But then on Friday, from Friday to Monday, uh, we actually uh, do a slower fermentation that goes as high as 110 hours or even more. We uh, do, obviously those you know fermentations will be slightly different, despite the fact that we use a slower yeast. But what we do on a Monday uh, when the guys come in, with the stillmen and the mashmen come in, they actually mix all the spirits that we created in the same new make tank. So you'll never be able to say. This whiskey has been matured for, has been from, um, fermented for 50 hours or 110 hours. But we like to think that that extra longer uh, fermentation will give us more of a fruitier dram. Same goes for distillation, which is possibly the most important thing for us. Uh, as we run, as I said before, one of the slowest distillation, um, one of the slowest distillation uh, possibly. Uh, we, uh, when, after we do our first wash distillation, our second, when we take our hearts, it normally runs for two, two hours and a half, and we take six, seven liters of alcohol per minute, which is extremely slow. We do this because we have some sort of like um, short and sturdy um, uh, stills, I think, kinds of their onion shape. There's not a lot of reflux. So we want to achieve, we want to get that reflux, but actually, uh, by just running the stills as low as possible. Why we do that is exactly for the reasons that I gave you before. It's for the texture and it's for the flavor. We want, you know, uh, highest, uh, you know, volatile esters. We want the alcohol, which is very fruity, which is very floral, uh, which struggles, you know, to get to the top and then be condensed again. So that when you try a whiskey, first of all, you find that it's very easy to drink. And second, that you'll find that it's very rich and complex on the palate as well. And that leads me to our Korekas, which is our, uh, which is my absolute favorite whiskey. Uh, because first of all, I'm a sucker for a cast strength uh, bottle, having worked for a lot of independent whiskey companies before. And um, second, I'm just, again, a big fan of bourbon cask. And this just is perfect for me because it's been, uh, it spent seven years um, in first fill bourbon cask beforehand, and then it's been transferred in quarter cask, which are especially made for us at 125 liters for another year. So it's not a shy finish if you think about it. And those casks are, you know, quite tiny compared to the normal hogsheads or the normal barrel. So what you have is like a 
more concentrated uh, flavor because obviously the smaller the vessel, the more the flavors you're going to extract. So this whiskey I literally tried to extract all of the flavors from this bourbon cask. And uh, the result, I like to call it as like a 10 year old on acid. <laughs> it's like, think of all the flavors that you get from uh, the 10 year old, but like just bigger. They're much more in your face. This is, it's just very exciting drama. It's almost like a, a little bit of a rebel. You have, you know, spiciness hitting you hard. There is a chili pepperiness. Uh, there is a, a black pepperiness. It's just very, very, it's a bit hot, it's a bit spicy, but then it's also extremely fruity and the fruitiness turned all tropical now. I don't know if you're a bit like a weirdo like I am, but I like to go around distilleries and try and smell everything and taste everything that is available to taste. And I don't know if you ever put your nose into a fresh bourbon cask, that when they come on a Tuesday morning in our distillery, they smell amazing. They smell like banana juice. And that's what I get here. I get coconut, I get banana, I get mango, all of the tropical fruitiness just right in your face and then it's just so waxy it just stays it's so young but it's just very very strong on your palate it's absolutely lovely and maybe it doesn't have the longest finish you know for a young whiskey but what it delivers on the palate right at the beginning it's absolutely stunning so uh, I always feel very passionate about this one because I think this is the whiskey that made me realize in January 2019 that I actually did uh, that I was actually very lucky to join the aloe vera and distillers company. This made me go to bed at ease. You know, it's like, yeah, you did the right thing, Mariella. Well done. This whiskey is absolutely awesome. <laughs> so I hope you enjoy it as much as I do. Cheers to all of you out there. Delicious. <laughs> absolutely lovely. Cool. Um, thank you very much for all the comments from all the people. Uh, I really appreciate it. Thank you. I hope you're all doing well, guys. And what I'm going to do now, I'm just going to pass you on to my colleague, Lucy, which, which uh, she'll uh, take you onto the Sherry cast drums. So I'm just going to bring her on stage. Cool. So I'm just going to head off to the back and leave you uh, the room, Lucy, and I'll just see you uh, later for the goodbyes. Bye bye. Thanks, Mariela. Evening, guys. Hope you guys are all well. Um, obviously, slightly different circumstances this weekend. I think this is probably one of the first times I've done a whiskey tasting from my living room. So not doing a whiskey tasting this time for the festival in and amongst our lovely casks at Arin. Um, but um, and I'm hope, hope you're all nicely warmed up with the first three drams that you've tried with Mariella. So I'm going to take you through um, the, some Aran whiskies that have more of a sherry focus uh, this time around. Uh, for those who don't know me, um, I'm Lucy. I'm one of the regional sales managers at Isle of Aran Distillers. Um, part of the uh, countries that I cover, some of the European countries like Belgium, uh, uh, the Netherlands and France, but I also um, cover Latin America as well. Actually, this time last year, just before the festival, I had just come back from Panama. So again, quite a different, uh, quite, quite a different uh, experience this time. But we look forward to um, inviting you to the distillery next year to have double the party and also um, to see you guys at the distillery. It'd be absolutely wonderful. Um, so without further ado, I'm sure you guys are equal as thirsty to get on with the next couple of whiskies. So for the first one we have to start, thank you very much for joining us uh, as I say this weekend. So we'll start to kick us off, we've got the Aaron 18 years old. Uh, this is actually one of my favorite whiskies from our range and it's the first whiskey, the first Aaron whiskey that I absolutely fell in love with. Uh, so much so that shortly after I joined the company, the start of 2019, um, I was off on holiday and had to bring a bottle of the 18 year olds with me. Uh, so not only ticking the box uh, for that cliche Scott that can't leave Scotland without a bottle of whiskey, uh, the Iron 18 for me was one that I had to bring with me and also share with my, my family. So this uh, Iron 18 is, well our Iron 18 is bottled at 46%, so it has been reduced. And the majority of the casks used to bottle, uh, used to mature, sorry, the Aran 18 are sherry hogsheads. It's particularly had some influence from some first fill sherry casks as well. You can see that with the lovely color, being all natural color. 
as Maria Lovell have said, it's taken all of the colour from those casks and being first fill, you have that sort of really nice, rich mahogany uh, colour. You can also, on the nose, pick up those really vibrant sherry flavours as well coming through. So you've got a nuttiness, some, some dark fruits. So many of you, some of you might be wondering, what is sherry? So sherry is a fortified wine from uh, the sherry region in the south of Spain. Uh, the grapes usually used for sherry are the Palomino grape, um, but also you can use Pedro Jimenez as well uh, for uh, creating your sherry. Some of you might be familiar with uh, Pedro Jimenez um, from like a whiskey perspective in terms of potential whiskies that have been uh, maturing in PX or Pedro Jimenez casks and this fortified wine comes um, from what's called the sherry triangle so you have Jerez de la Frontera, uh, San Lucar de Barameda and Puerto de Santa Maria and this um, lovely sherry wine comes from this region um, and we're lucky enough to be able to use uh, those casks for the maturing of our whiskey like with our RNA team. Now even though you get these really nutty um, and sherry-led flavours that sort of Aaron character that Mariella has um, spoken about as well. You've got the orchard fruits, citrus. It still really stands up nicely in with the sort of sherry cask, even though it's first fill um, and very punchy. You've got those lovely Aaron characters in there. Given the fact that you've got so many whiskies from all around the world, not just Scotland, being able to have your have our Aaron stamp on our whiskies is something amazing. And in every single bottle that you try, um, you definitely find that Aaron character there, which I think is something so that we can be so proud of. Um, and it's really special that you can find that in in each of the bottlings. Now, if we take a sip. Again, those rich flavours I mean, through. It's got such nice body, lots of sort of nuttiness. And again, those really nice fruity sort of citrus notes really balance out the lovely sherry, sherry aspects of the cask. And definitely is reason behind it being one of my favourites from the range. Now, a theme from uh, this weekend being our sort of one weekend where we're going to not only celebrate um, the Aaron Moulton Music Festival, but also celebrates uh, the fact that we turned 25 on Monday. So it's a really big weekend for us, a really, really big milestone. And actually having an 18 year old as part of not only our range, but our part of our core range, albeit the limited side of the core range, is something truly amazing. So we started distilling in 1995. Um, and the um, Aaron 18 was first introduced to our core range in February 2016. And that was a real sort of part of our history where we've got age stock as part of um, our core range. That's pretty, pretty awesome to have. As Marielle had said, in 1995, when we started distilling, everyone would have thought probably that Harold Curry was mad in 93, 94, um, the years sort of leading up to when we opened up the distillery. Uh, distilleries were closing down, as Mariella said. And actually in 1993, I believe this is one of the years with the lowest fill records um, for filling casks for whiskey maturation. Um, so the fact that it only started to really pick up from that, and that's when we started filling our casks is, is something awesome and that we're very, very proud of. And a good way to celebrate it is with the 18 year old Sis Lange. Definitely uh, one of my favorites from the range. Now talking about milestones and aged, uh, aged expressions, that takes us nicely on to our 21 year old. So this was introduced to the range as part of the core range at the end of 2018. So not all that long ago. And interestingly, you can see already, I don't know if you can see it from the bottles, but the color are very, very different. The 18 is much darker. So with our 21, what we've used is we've used a sherry punchins. These are 500 litre casks. So the same in literage as a sherry butt. And these would have been used to hold sherry wines and also transport sherry wines when this was possible over from Spain, over to the UK and to Scotland for us to use. And also given the fact that they would have been filled um, 
sort of 21 years ago and longer, um, these would have been genuine sherry casks that we used. This is something really rare to come across nowadays, um, and which I'll come on to a bit later with our sherry cask bodega. Sorry, take a sip of water. <laughs> with a sherry cask bodega. And it's um, given the fact it's had <clears throat> 21 years in, in the cask, it's also had time to melt. So the flame, if we compare it to the 18 year old, and this will have been from not only the fact that the casks we've used have slight, are slightly less active than the casks used for the 18 year old, but again, they've had that added time, that 21 years in the cask. When you nose the 21, it's actually something that's got quite a dusty nose, and dusty I mean in a good way. It actually kind of when you nose it, it transports you to the warehouse. So although we can't be on the Kranza, at the Kranza now um, for the festival, we can still kind of be transported when we are sipping the cask, sipping the whiskey rather. It's very soft, very delicate, very different in style to the 18. And also given the sort of softness um, of um the whiskey itself it really allows the Aaron character to shine through with the 21 it's um amazing to have a little sneak peek into the past of our distilling um much nearer the start of when uh we started to distill and produce whiskey um and actually it's a real testament to our first distillery manager Gordon Mitchell um so it's really his legacy to create such a fantastic quality spirit that um, we've carried forward in the terms of how we've produced the spirit to fill into our cask. And it's something really special. You also get lots of tropical fruits um, starting to come to the fore as well with the Aaron 21. And not only 21, we're going to have, as um, I've seen Ewan's mentioned the 20, uh, 25, we're going to have a 25 year old whiskey um, launched at the end of this year, um, being obviously our 25th birthday on Monday. Um, and that's, you know, I think you can't even imagine um, maybe um, Harold's curry at the time, thinking that you'd have a, a whiskey, um, an Aaron whiskey that's 25 down the line. So everyone will be able to look forward to that uh, whiskey coming out later on in the year something as well while we're enjoying the 21 i'm just getting slight honey notes as well as it starts to open up um something else that's quite interesting to talk about is the relationship between sh the sherry industry and the scotch industry so in interestingly i don't believe there is like an official record of um, when the first sherry casks were used in uh, whiskey production. However, in 1962, there is a record from someone called William Sanderson, who's a renowned um, sort of dis distiller and a pioneer of distilling, who is based down in Leith in Edinburgh. And um, he had basically written about the um, virtues and, and the benefits of using sherry casks for whiskey maturation. And it was around this time, um, sort of the mid 1800s, that the sort of um, the, the use of sherry casks really started to pick up. And this was because you had um, what was known, what were known as grocers, wine, wine merchants, and whiskey blenders, and they would ship over sherry in the cask to Scotland in these 500 litre casks, similar to the ones that were used with the Aran 21. And they'd ship the, the sherry wines in the cask at this time over to, to Scotland. They'd, um, fill, they'd bottle the sherry, sell the sherry on. And also being the thrifty Scots they were, they would also um, either reuse the cask for, um, for creating their own whiskey or they'd sell on the cask to um, distillers in order for them to use. So this is around the mid 1800s and you had people like Arthur Bell 
uh, from Bell's Whiskey, uh, Matthew Glogue, who will have uh, created Famous Grouse, <clears throat> and uh, the Dewar's, Dewar brothers, Dewar's brothers, rather, um, who would have um, created the Dewar's blend. And uh, so they would have done this, and they were based in Perth, which was um, a hub of activity when it came to whiskey blending and, and whiskey creating. And um, so this is really how sort of that use really started to um, to boom in in Scotland. And not only that, in 19, the 1960s, 70s and 80s, um, Scotland was actually one of the biggest export markets for um, sherry wines, believe it or not. So there was a real influx of casks coming through which allowed whiskey distillers and um, whiskey distillers and distilleries to use these casks for their production. However, things actually changed in uh, 1987. So what happened was you had the Consejo Regulador, which is like the governing body for um, sherry wines in Jerez. Um, and they basically put a stop to the export in bulk of sherry wines. And this meant that sort of distillers, um, whiskey blenders would have to go to Jerez to um, source the casks themselves. And, uh, and that meant that it was obviously much harder for distillers to get hold of the casks and the demand slowly outstripped the supply. And this led to, uh, <laughs> thanks Ian, <laughs> how we sit. And um, so this led to um, basically a new type of cask being introduced into to the whiskey industry called the pre-season cask. And I'll come on to that a bit later when we come to our bodega. In terms of these lovely casks used for our 21, given the time they were filled, they would have been genuine ex-bodega casks, so genuine casks used um, to actually make sherry wines. But nowadays, and especially since uh, the changes of the law in 1987, Bodegas uh, are actually more reluctant to release these casks and they want to use them themselves. themselves. However, um, we're actually really lucky at Isle of Arran Distillers because we still have access to these ex bodega casks that are super rare. Anyone who is uh, familiar with um, the James McTaggart 12 year old, the man with the golden glass, where James features as James Bond. Um, we've actually used casks from a lovely bodega in um, Jerez called Jimenez Spinola. And these casks were actually retired from a 1964 Solera. So super rare casks and a, a real privilege to be able to use them. Also, um, we have also teamed up with Bodega Tradicion, which is another lovely bodega in Jerez, to use casks for our first two um, parts of our Explorers series, so our product bay, La Cranza Castle. Again, being able to use these really rare uh, casks really are just something super special. And it means that our limited edition aren't just limited editions, but they've actually, um, we've had the benefit of using these really special casks um, to use them, which is something pretty cool. So I'm hoping you're enjoying the 21. Look forward to, to hearing your, your thoughts as we go through. But really fresh, really lovely. And um, just a little sneak peek into our distilling past as well. This brings us on to our third dram of the evening. Now I've decided to go for a different style glass this time. So this is actually a sherry capita or a little glass, um, which is also quite good for nosing and tasting whiskey as it happens. And also you get a decent size measure in as well, which is very important when it comes to um, drinking whiskey in my household. And this time I am going to introduce you to our third sherry style whiskey um, that we've got tonight. This is a uh, our sherry cask bodega. And this time we've notched the ABV up to 55.8. So it's kind of like the sherry version or, or a similar um, style whiskey to the Bodega, uh, not the, the um, quarter cask, sorry, <laughs> um, but in a sherry style. It's actually the first time we've introduced a sherry cask strength to the range. So um, another kind of milestone for us um, in terms of additions to our range. This is a younger style sherry cask so this is actually seven years old 
majority of which are in first fill sherry casks. However, slightly different sherry casks to um, the ones that would have been used for making the 21 and also the casks that went into making the 18 year old. So what's happened at, was that once the Consejo Regulador stopped um, the bulk export of sherry and that meant that um, like the genuine expedega casks were much harder to come across. They developed something called pre-seasoned casks. And these are the ones that are used mainly in uh, the whiskey industry today and would have been used to make our lovely bodega. These are new oak casks um, that will have been seasoned with sherry for two years. Um, and the great thing about using a pre-seasoned cask is you can choose the type of oak um, that you use to make them, which gives the distiller a bit more flexibility when it comes to maturing their whiskies. So you have two types of oak. You've got uh, mainly which are is the white oak, Quercus alba, American oak. Um, and this oak was actually used to make the sherry, traditional sherry casks used for um, sherry production. Um, so this is quite is a very strong oak, um, not very porous, ideal for long term maturation. And it gives you flavours of like honey, vanilla, coconut, that sort of thing. Alternatively, you could use um, European oak or Quercus roba. Um, this gives you a slightly different flavour. This time it's dark fruits um, like raisins, sultanas, fruit cakes, um, those sort of things. And uh, also it's a very porous wood, so it's good for shorter term maturation. Um, because of the new oak, used with these casks, you get very punchy flavors, lots of spice, that really nice oaky characteristic that you really get on the, on the nose of this whiskey. But again, that Aran fruitiness is there. It's really punchy, it's got so much character. Like Mariella, I love a cask strength whiskey. And obviously I love, I love a sherry cask influenced whiskey as well. So this definitely ticks both the boxes. Let's take a sip. It's got so much going on. It's fantastic. Great mouthfeel. Lots of sort of cherries, figs, lots of sort of dried fruit in particular. It's an absolute knockout jam. And I know it's been very, very um, popular since we released it at, um, last year with our new lovely bottles. So the car suppliers we will, we will work with are the likes of Miguel Martin. And also we work with Castanolio as well to, um, to get these wonderful casks. And since James McTaggart joined the distillery, cask policy has been something super important for Aaron. And it's something that we've really held true to this day, so much so that he, he um, James, I believe Ewan, and even my predecessor, Lucy, had gone over to Spain to meet some of these cast suppliers and check the quality of their cast to make sure that they were good enough for maturing our whiskey, which definitely got the stamp for that. Um, and here we are today using their lovely casks for um, our expressions. So I hope you've enjoyed um, sampling these three uh, whiskies. I know definitely I have, and a great way to be celebrating the uh, 25th anniversary. And it's really interesting to see as well how the slight difference, uh, differences in the casks you use have an impact on the flavor, um, on the aromas, and also obviously on the colors of these whiskies, even though they're um, all um, using these ex sherry casks. Now, I've been too busy talking and drinking. Let's see if there's some if, uh, people have any questions for me. Sorry, I've not been able to keep up with them as speedily as Mariella has. I'm still getting used to doing the online tastings. Great to see everyone tuning in as well. Hopefully you've managed to be able to be um, drinking these whiskies along with me as I describe them and, and talk about them. Um, maybe some of you even managed to buy the, the packs as well, the bundles that are offer on the website. Uh, well, if anybody has any more questions that I've missed, please feel free to, thank you, Scott. 
I'm very passionate about my my uh, my sherry as um, hopefully, hopefully as well as my whiskey, obviously. Um, but uh, I hope Marielle will come back in because I think we'll want to, we'll need to have a cheers to celebrate and uh, our 25th anniversary. Absolutely, that was amazing. Thank you very much. I actually loved the sherry experience too. I learned a few things that I didn't know before. So, so the sherry love is real, and I absolutely yeah. love the amount. I love your pours. I don't know if it's the glass, but it just looks like such a nice pour. <laughs> Way to go! Definitely, this is a little Tio Pepe one. Um, Gonzalez buyers. That's amazing. Uh, <laughs> So yeah, uh, thank you very much, everyone, for uh, uh, for tuning in. Um, actually, a question just got in right now that I think we can answer uh, together, which is, oops, comments are going so fast I couldn't. Uh, no, that was not the right one. <laughs> That's the one. So someone is asking if the bundles are still available, and the answer is no. Uh, but actually, our uh, lovely marketing manager Jackie, which is in the background. It, which is helping up massively with our social media today, uh, just informed us that there is a, a port and the Sauterne on uh, offer at the moment uh, with a 25% discount uh, on our website, um, on our web shop. So in case you would like to get some of the, the port and the Sauterne, feel free to you know head over there and uh, grab this deal uh, while it lasts. Um, but yeah, I think I can see yeah, I can't see any more questions, so I think we should just uh, cheers and, uh, yeah, and yeah, and just hope, hope to see you all next year in uh, in Locrans and on an Iron again uh, for a yeah. much bigger mm -hmm. celebration, more music, more uh, dancing, and uh, just more everything. <laughs> so cheers to everyone yeah, for joining. Cheers, everyone. And thanks for joining us this evening. One last thing that I would like to say before we actually close this is uh, uh, please join us tomorrow as well as we are doing a distillery tour, which would be actually amazing uh, distillery tour video of Black Distillery, if you're interested in what's happening over there and how we're making the spirit that we're making. And also a live interview with the distillery manager, Graham. So it will be at 3 p.m. on our uh, lag uh, page or our Iron uh, YouTube page. And uh, I hope that you all gonna you all have a special drum saved for Monday where it'll be our 25th birthday because we'll all raise a, a glass and a toast of 1429 on Monday the 29th of June. Cool. I'm done. <laughs> Cheers again. I hope to see you all soon. Yeah. Cheers, guys. Bye -bye. Cheers. <laughs>